Welcome back uh, to another session uh, on LT Spice. This time we're going to focus on dependent source. Um, at this point, the assumption is that you've watched the introduction to LT Spice, an earlier video that shows how to use LT Spice. And at this point, you are uh, we're kind of moving forward and talking about how to implement dependent sources in um, LT Spice. As you know, we have independent sources, and those are the sources that, for example, independent voltage source is drawn with a circle, and that basically gives you a given voltage, whatever the value of the voltage is, it gives you regardless of what the rest of your circuit is doing. And then, of course, the independent current source is done in a circle with the arrow, so a voltage source, uh, a, in a independent, uh, independent voltage source will be, will be drawn as such and that basically whatever the number is that they give you five whatever five ten whatever it's consistently going to give you that regardless of what else is happening in your circuit that's an independent we do have dependent sources we use a diamond <laughs> to represent them and the reason they call them dependent sources or another name that we commonly use for it is called a uh, <clears throat> A control source. Sometimes you hear people refer to them as a control source. Um, is shown by diamond again. Independent current source will be represented as such with a circle, meaning it's independent of what happened to your circuit. And when they say three amp, it's always going to give you three amp regardless of what is happening in the circuit. Now, having said that, the the um, um, uh, current source, uh, the dependent sources we have, or the control sources, I'm going to use the word dependent at this point from this point on, but you sometimes hear people refer to these as control sources because they're controlled by something else in your circuit. And we have total of four variety. Um, one is the, this is called the voltage control voltage source because the value of the voltage in the source depends on the voltage someplace else in your circuit. The next one is called um, uh, a current controlled current source because the value of current going through the source, this current F, is um, dependent on uh, what's going on in the rest of the circuit. So wherever, wherever the IX is marked, okay? Um, and then, um, so, and then the next one is um, called a voltage dependent current source. In other words, the the source is a current source, but it depends on the voltage someplace else in your circuit. And the last one is basically the um, voltage dependent current source. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the current dependent voltage source. So, so the voltage coming out of this uh, source depends on the current coming into it. You might wonder why do we do this? There is most almost exclusively these devices are used to model characteristic of a circuit you, commonly for example we have transistors and other devices that their behavior is controlled by other things in the circuit how much current they run through it how much amplification do you do or whatever else you're doing and in those cases we typically use these control sources or dependent sources to to be able to model the behavior of those complex devices. So we can, we can translate them and analyze them using the tools available to us. Now, in LT SPICE and most of the other SPICE-based simulation programs, we have a name for the, for the voltage dependent voltage source. We use a little E. Uh, for current dependent current source, we use a F. And for voltage dependent current source, we use a G and on and on. Now, at this point, I'm going to switch over to LT Spice and kind of show, talk about how we go about implementing these different things, different uh, dependent sources in LT Spice in case you have a circuit you have to simulate. So let's put this word document away and let's take a look at this. So I'm going to start with E, go through the alphabet one at a time. So this is a pre existing circuit but wanted to kind of walk through this and show you how it's done. So if, if, you look, if you look at this circuit, basically this is the implementation of a voltage control voltage source. So if I were to draw this, this piece, 
if I wanted to replace this piece the way we draw it in a schematic, it basically would be, uh, would be a, oops. Uh, let me go, let's clean this up a little bit. Okay. And so if, if I were to do this, if I were to show you a schematic of this, it would basically look like this. Okay. And this would be plus minus the multiplier, which is here would be a four. And the voltage it depends on is across here. So let's say, let's call this one Vx. But in this case it's Vm1, but we can call this Vx. So it would be four Vx. So this is an implementation of voltage control, voltage source <clears throat> with a value of four Vx. So, so what you do, um, Basically, this device, this device, I'm, I'm just actually going to, uh, this device is a, you just go to the devices and you select an E. This device is an E. So if you look through here, you've got a device E. And if you click on it, oops, I clicked on the wrong. It says this is a voltage dependent voltage source. So these two terminals are what control, that's a VX. So you just basically, you put it in your circuit, you draw it to where the Vx is, and this piece goes in your circuit wherever you want the voltage to be driving. So let me go ahead and show you a simulation. And of course, we, we set the simulation up, and I set it as a DC um, signal point simulation, and I'm going to run the simulation. And when I run the simulation, I'm just going to basically watch here for the voltage values if you want. So if you look at it, the voltage here, I try to make it simple. The voltage here is three volts. So the sensing side is seeing three volts. In this side, it says you gotta take the three volts, you multiply it for four to get the voltage here. So let's see if you get it. Sure enough, 12. Three times four is 12. So now the question is just, just to take it to the next step. Let's say I change this to a five. Okay, so I should be, at this point, if I do the simulation again, I should be seeing a 15 up there, perfect. So yeah, as you can see, the voltage, the V of X, control what voltage you deliver to your circuit. So that's the, that's the voltage control voltage source. Let's go down the list and I'll uh, just basically, we will go through this and I have these made so we don't spend a lot of time in the video going through. The next one is the F, which is a control source control, uh, a control, uh, uh, a current controlled current source. Now these are a little bit quirky. As you see, there is no sensing side to it. The way they work is if you <coughs> right click on the part, you have the value in here, or simply just click on the values and it gives it to you. So this is basically saying you, it, it, it going to look at voltage source V1 and then it's going to take a look at that and, and multiply whatever current goes through it by six and that would be the current going through here. Okay so F. So where do I find this? You just click on the device and you find um, the uh, F basically look for the letter F and here it is and if you want to put it in this is basically this source that you put in here. Okay, so what uh, what are we implementing? Let's let's just draw what we are implementing. What we are implementing here again, we are implementing a current source. So this point, this point, are these two points, and we are implementing a current source. And the current source goes here, and basically the multiplier is six, and the current is looking at whatever is going through I one. So this is really an six I X that we are implementing, this is Ix. So this is 6Ix, and that's what we basically are implementing. So, so in here, I know, for example, before we do the simulation, let's see if we can figure it out by, by ourselves. We have a four volt across a two, which means in this case, Ix is equal to four divided by 2000, which means it's two milliamp, okay? Since this is controlled by that, I really should be seeing a 12 milliamp. So don't worry about, which direction, because that gets a little bit involved of which one is assumed to be positive or negative. And I would say for now, just experiment with it <clears throat> and you'll figure it out. So we might get a minus 12 or 12, depending on <coughs> whether, I whether, I, whether I oriented the part the correct way or not when I put it in. 
So if I go in here and run a simulation on this thing, and the simulation runs, and I'm gonna look to see what current is going through here. If you look at the current that flows through here, I would like you to talk, look down here. If you look down here in the, um, in the result page right here, you will see that, um, uh, actually I can do this for this. If you look at it here, you've got a 12 milliamp going through here. By the way, you, if, if you don't like the fact that it's negative, you can either twist this around to get the right thing going, or you can uh, do it this way by putting, by making your multiplier, making your multiplier negative six. And if you do that uh, and then rerun the simulation, then, uh, then you see that now it's, now with the value is 12 milliamp down here, okay? Um, so this was a current control, current source. It's kind of getting a little bit boring. The one uh, thing we'll have to come back, all the ones that depend on the current, they're, they're basically control, control, current controlled. You, you always have to look at the current through a voltage source. So if there was not a voltage source here, I would come in and put a voltage source in here with a voltage of zero and then look at the current through it. In, in, the, in this case, we did have a voltage source. The current was through a voltage source, so we are all good. Okay. So the next one we want to look at is basically the, uh, so we've done E and F. Now we're going to go to G and the, the G one is, uh, and I'm gonna go grab it so you can kind of see there is a G in here. And uh, so if you look at it, there is a G. And the G is voltage dependent current source. So basically the voltage across here controls what current goes in here. And I kind of pick this uh, so that so the, if, if I go in here and I get the G, so you can see what it looked like. The G looks like this, which is basically what I have in here. And I'll take the sensing side and connect it to where it needs to be. So this one, it tries to implement a current source, but this current source's value is minus 0.5 times the voltage across V1, or this, this voltage from here to here happened to be Vx. It doesn't have to be. You can get any, you can put it anywhere in the circuit. I just wanted to simplify it. And I just want, in this case, I, if you notice, I put a, mi put a minus in here to let you know you can do minus. And I put a fraction in here, just the decibel point side, just so you know you don't have to use integer numbers. You can use any number you like for the multiplier. These are called the multiplier or the gain, if you will, the number. So this is how it works, and uh, you, we can we can change the values by simply right click on this one, and instead of point, well actually let's take a look at point five first. So so the voltage across here is four times minus point five. I should be getting two through through this current source. So let's see if we are doing that. So we're going to run it, and then once we run it, we're going to go over here and we look at it. And if you see if you see over here. I'm getting a minus two milliamps through that uh, source, okay? All right. Now, if I change it, of course, if you, if you go in here to the value side and make it, let's say four. And if I say four, then I've got the four volts coming in multiplied by four, so I have to have a 16 in here somehow. And so I have to do the simulation before the new numbers show up. And I do the simulation and when I go over here to look to see what's going through it, you notice once again that you've got 16 going through here. So this was a voltage controlled current. So as you see, there is four combination, right? Uh, so, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go back and do take a look at the very last one of this uh, variation. And that's the H, what they refer to as the H. Or, and uh, let's go ahead I, and I have a circuit just to demonstrate that. So, um, oops, no file exists, that's not good. So let's go over here and see if I can find that file real quick. Um, yep, okay, um, so we're gonna go file open and we want the H1, so we'll just grab the H1, there it is. And, and this one, 
I intentionally put the zero volt source in here because what this is, what they, this is a, a H, which if you go here and look at what H is, H is a current dependent voltage source. So this, this thing depends on the current. And, and at this point, I kind of set it up a little bit different. Just wanted you guys to see is that I basically says, let's call this one IX. And let's uh, make this a dependent voltage source. But say this is dependent on, uh, in this case, three, multiplier is three, where I'm dependent on IX. So there was no source in here. And so since this has to be a voltage source in here, I came in and added a voltage source in here and made the voltage source, the voltage equal to zero, and zero. So really it's not affecting your circuit. All it's doing is giving you a reference so you can to the IFX. So sometimes you have to do this, especially if it's not where there's a source you can readily take advantage of it. This is the case. So what happens, I should see the current through here. I don't even know what the current in here is. For first of all, I'm gonna go and do a little modification here. This is not gonna work out because I haven't selected a value for here. So let me let me select a value of to make our life easier. I'll select the value of 100 ohms. We know that 100 ohms and 100 ohms uh, give us. Um, actually, actually, we can figure this out. So we've got five volts here. Five volts is across this hundred and this hundred. So the current through this hundred would be five over 100. Or another way of saying it's 50 milliamps. As far as we're concerned, they, we, we know the answer is that the current through here um, is equal to, let me write that down someplace. So IX based on our calculation is 50 milliamp. And then since this is going to be three, my expectation is that the, current, the voltage across here should be 150 millivolt plus or minus, depend on the orientation of the sources, how I did that. So if we, uh, if we do the simulation on this one, and then we go over here and take a look, and take a look at the voltage at this point, and sure enough that it is. And again, once again, if you don't like that, if your orientation is not quite right for you, and you wanted that to be a plus, uh, then you go to the value and make the multiplier negative, the gain negative three instead of plus three, rerun, rerun the simulation again. And uh, once the simulation is run, you get 150. And don't worry about that 0 0.001 millivolt out. So that's just simply, uh, some losses is figuring out some calculate some floating point issues that is happening in the in the simulation of the circuit. So that's way out in the percentages of accuracy so far down the list that you can li literally ignore it. It's not important to for, for our work right now. All right, so that kind of brings us so full circle back to what we covered in this uh, section. We basically what we did was we talked about dependent sources in LT spice. Uh, we started with voltage dependent voltage source, which the designator is E, and the current dependent current source, which is F, G, and H. The stuff that depends on the voltage is pretty straightforward. They give you a sensing probe, two, two wires for sensing plus and minus. You connect those to wherever you want the voltage that controls your, uh, your uh, devices. Current is a little bit weird the way they have implemented it because it depends on you specifying a controlling voltage source and it has to be a controlling voltage source and the current through the voltage source is what control it. And then you have to say what the multiplier or gain is. Okay, in, the, in the case of E and G, you just say the multiplier. In the case of F and H, since they depend on the current, you have to specify the current source, uh, the voltage source. And by the way, if there is not a voltage source in the branch that you're interested in the current, you add a zero volt voltage source in there and then use that current to control your source. It's a little bit kludgy, but that's, that's just uh, the way they have implemented. So thanks for hanging in there. That brings us to the end of this part, talking about dependent sources or control sources in LT Spice. Have a great day.